3D printing is amazing, but it could be better. And in order for it to be better, I feel we need to see the development of apps that make 3D printers as easy to use as a microwave. Simply select what you want and press a button and the 3D printer springs to life. Now, you might think that that's not necessary. You might think 3D printers work fine the way that they are. There's nothing wrong with making your own 3D model or going out and finding something online and then loading it into a slicer and then moving it over to your machine and then loading filament. But it could be easier. And in my opinion, for 3D printing to really take off, to really grow, to really see its full potential, these apps need to be developed. And you know what? there are already some people working on it. So in this video, I want to take a look at some of the attempts that have already been made to make apps that make 3D printing as easy to use as an appliance. Take a look at what they're doing right, take a look at where they could maybe do better, and maybe give some ideas for just a general direction that this could take in the future. Now, during this conversation, I already can tell that there are going to be some points where I could go on tangents, but I'm going to try to keep it reined in during this discussion. If we come to one of those points where I could go on a tangent, I will acknowledge it, but there's probably already a video where I've talked about that. So I'll link to it in the cards. And I know that that means that this video is probably going to come with homework, but this channel is the 3D printing professor. So, uh, school's in session. But before we get started, I want to tell you a little story. Once upon a time, there was a farmer that had a goose, and this goose laid golden eggs. One golden egg per day. Now, that afforded the farmer some creature comforts in life, but over time, he started to think, well, one egg per day, that is okay, but inside that goose there must be hundreds of eggs and if i could get at them i could live like a king and one day in a fit of envy he killed the goose slit it open and discovered that he had simply killed the goose that laid the golden eggs now why did i tell you that story we'll come back to that later but if you like the illustrations that accompanied that story, those were made by my son and you can find more of his artwork on Instagram. I'll have a link in the description so you can check him out if you like, but he's getting some talent. Now, the first app that I want to take a look at is called Polo Print Cloud. And this is a very interesting one. It has a library of models that you can choose from. It has some customizable objects that you can add your name to mostly. It does have some teaching tutorial tools on it as well. And I've confirmed that it does in fact work. So what's wrong with it? Well, there are a couple of things. Well, for one, uh, let's take a look here. Do you recognize this owl right here? You might have seen this before online. This is in fact the famous owl statue by Kushawa way back in 2012 uploaded to Thingiverse. And this model has been remixed so many times. You've probably seen this model as a test print on some 3D printer. This is a famous, famous model. But if we go back to the app real fast, and if we look a little bit at this, we might notice something. We might notice that they are saying that this was uploaded by 3D Maker, that Kushawa is not given any credit whatsoever uh, to have made this model. And what's interesting is they seem to know this because they put on every single one of these models a little disclaimer that says, this was uploaded by users, therefore we're not responsible for it, except it wasn't. And it's only used for learning and communication, which they don't restrict this to only being used in schools. And if it violates your rights, you can contact us to delete it. Where? How? And how are the people who made these models going to even know that you uploaded them? You're not telling them. You're not notifying them. You're just hoping that you can quietly get away with it. Now, this is where I could go off on my first tangent, talking about the legalities and the legal reasons why they shouldn't be doing this. But 
I'm going to just link to a previous video where I've already talked about this. And in this video, I'm going to try to focus on a better reason why they shouldn't be doing this. However, if we go back to the to the collections and keep on looking through them, knowing that they're simply scraping models from the internet and throwing them on there. There were a couple of them that I noticed that, yeah, that's Flowlistics, Bulbasaurs, we know that. We know that they didn't make any of these, but there was another problem that we ran into. I found a model on here and I tried printing it. And when I tried printing it, uh, here, we'll take a look at, ah, there it is, the Pidgeot here. Now, I don't know who modeled this Pidgeot, because again, they don't link to it. But when I hit print on this model, if you take a look at the shape of this STL here, what do you immediately see? If you're a seasoned 3D printer, what do you need to do to make this model print successfully? If you said, turn on supports, you would be correct. But when you hit print on their app, there is no option to turn on supports and they don't turn on supports by default. So when I tried printing this, it failed. So they started making the app, the app that I'm like, we need to have, but then I guess they realized how much effort it was going to take. And instead of completing it, they just kind of said, uh, let's just scrape models off the internet, throw it on there and not even try them to see if they work. Like, come on, you, you gotta be trying your own source. You gotta be making sure that these will print. Otherwise people are just going to have bad experience after bad experience. And admittedly, it will take a lot of time and effort to create a curated list, a uh, body of models that you can do. But this is important. You can't just throw stuff out there that isn't going to print. You have to be able to make it print. People need to have a successful experience with this one. So the Polo Print app could get better, but right now it looks good but it doesn't really work all of the time. Sometimes it does, sometimes, sometimes it just doesn't. And that's frustrating. Another one is the Creality Cloud. Now this app got into a little bit of a rocky start because at first they were just taking any model that anybody uploaded without any attribution and just throwing it up there. The community uh, straightened them out a little bit. And now they're doing, I think, a much better job of you know, giving attribution to the person who created them. They get their name right across the top. They have premium models on here. And overall, the Creality Cloud is getting much better. I should really load up my Creality Cloud onto a Creality 3D printer and check this out and see how well it's working. If you have any experience with the Creality Cloud, let me know in the comments what you think about it. There's also the Kakoni app. And while I'm having to bite my tongue a little bit because there's a lot more that could be said, I'll once again just say check out the you know link in the cards. In fact, Uncle Jesse recently made a fantastic video about their current Kickstarter, but I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about their app. Does it work? Well, I don't know. I haven't had a chance to get their previous 3D printer, the one that this app was made for, and their current one I am pointedly not talking about, but they are doing a better job at in this app right now of at least attributing the original creators, but okay, they're not doing a very good job. None of these apps are doing a very good job. Well, Creality Cloud might be, but none of these apps are doing a very good job of letting the community do the heavy lifting for them. Every one of these models they have to put on here. Every one of these models, they have to find out who made it. Every one of these models, they have to test themselves. Now, there is one that's doing a fantastic job, and I want to dive into them just a little bit. Right here is the gold standard. This is the app for the toy box 3d printer. Not only have they been giving attribution to the model creators who created their models from the very beginning. And in fact, even made a link to where you can check out more of their models. Not only have they tested every single one of these models and made sure that it will print on their 3d printer, not only 
do they have people who are making models for them? They have hired designers to create new models for them. And so they have all the time new original content that is exclusive to their platform. Not only that, but you can access it all from a web page just as easily. You could go right now to make.toys. You could check out the models that they have on here. You can you know, see what's available, see where it came from, check them out, decide if you want to try them. And I guarantee you every single one of these print on the toy box 3d printer. This is amazing. This is great. They're doing an amazing job of courting great talent and getting them to do amazing things with them. And in fact, you know what, if we go back to toy box, let me show you how much I love toy box print a block. Look at that. All of my printer blocks are available right now for toy box users to download and print and use. This is cool. Okay. They have done such an amazing job. I really enjoy what they do. In fact, the toy box 3d printer that I have, I've got an old phone sitting next to it so that my kids can just come up and start a print any time that they want. And they do. My kids love making their own 3d prints all the time. I love the toy box. I, I love their app. I love their website. I love everything that they're doing. My one criticism about toy box is that it's only for toy box. Now we get to the part of the conversation where I ask, what if, what if it were possible to have a app that was like Polo print possible to apply to multiple different 3d printers, but had a curated set of 3d models that were guaranteed printable and that didn't require a lot of effort on the part of one group or manufacturer or whatever to maintain and keep on top of. How would that even be possible? Well, do you remember the golden goose? In this case, the golden goose is the community of people who are making models for 3D printing. There are thousands of people out there making millions of models that are available and to the people who write these apps that's the golden goose they look at that and go well we don't have to do any modeling let's just take them all for ourselves and in the process of just scraping the internet for them they are killing the golden goose because the community could make their app amazing what if this, this is just a possibility, but think about this for a second. What if one of these manufacturers partnered with printables or Thangs or my mini factory or Thingiverse or one of these websites that already has a large repository of 3d models. And what if they said, Hey, if you could just add a little checkbox to say, I certify that this is printable. I want to apply it to this printing app or this printing repository. Maybe here's a couple of settings. I mean, basic, basic stuff like, you know, do you need to turn on support or not? No, nothing complicated, but enough that you could say, here's how you get a successful print out of it. And then what if we rewarded the community for people using the app to print their model? Printables already has a reward system built into it. And we could just piggyback on that. Hey, somebody printed your model with the app at the settings that you said worked. They took a little picture of it to certify it. Well, there you go. There's a little kickback reward for it, but it doesn't even have to be an actual real thing. People go crazy for digital rewards. They could just come up with some way of saying, Hey, you've had 10, you've had a hundred, you've had a thousand people print your models, you know, at a boy and people would love to have that most people who are making 3d models and putting them out there for free for other people all they really want is for people to print them and use them and this is a great way to do that of course if you could work in a system as well for premium models the ability to set a price and say hey you know i i, I want to make this much every time somebody you know buys this model and 
I'm of the opinion to say you can buy it once and print it as many times as you want, but hey, if somebody wanted to be a little bit more draconian and say, we're going to set this up so every print costs a quarter or something like that, those possibilities within this ecosystem could exist. And some of these repositories are already setting up to do premium models. So all you have to do is, you know, reward the designer who made it and then do your 3D printing. I mean, the framework is already there. We are this close to this being a possibility. You know, something else that I think would be cool, a lot of 3D printers now are coming with touch screens. Well, what if we could take this app, this framework, whatever, and extend it to the touch screen so that without even having to pull up your phone or your computer on a website, you could directly from the 3D printer do a quick search for what you're looking for, hit print, and get it. I mean, I think that there's some real possibilities here. Now, I also think that there should be a conversation about the sort of things that people upload. I think that a lot of useful household items really should be uploaded to this and, and made available on it, but that will come if the framework is there, I think. I'm excited for 3D printing. I'm excited for the possibility that this idea could offer. And I want to know your thoughts on it as well. Do you think 3D printing can and should be this easy to use? And if it were, what logistics do you see needing to be addressed? And what sort of things would you want to do with it? Sound off in the comments, and as always, I want to thank you very much for watching and remind you, you are a child of God, so you're special to me. So take care of yourself, and if you can, someone else too. I'll see you next time.